It was a peaceful Thursday morning. The sun was bright, the air was clear, and the city was coming to life. Everything seemed calm and hopeful on this beautiful summer's day. Sitting at the kitchen table, he was having a morning coffee and blueberry bagel as he checked the morning news and awaited a phone call from the garage that was repairing his car. Someone had pulled out in front of him and there was significant damage to the steering mechanism. As usual, there was little good news and the economy was struggling to recover its footing after the recent events. He had taken the next couple of days off work as he lacked transportation. Hopefully the shop would get it finished soon. Hello? Morning. So what's the news? So really, it's happening. You can't tell me when, though? We don't really know? We have any idea? Oh, man. That's just... That's terrible. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean... My car's broke down, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I've got my bicycle, and uh, I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm heading to my, my bug out location. That's all I've got. It's gonna take me a couple days to get there. Do you think we'll be okay for the next 72 hours or so? All right, hey, listen, I really appreciate it. Okay, thanks so much for letting me know. Uh, Wow, it's just hard to, it's hard to believe that this is actually happening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you too. All right. God bless and be safe. All right, bye. The call was from a close friend who was in a lifelong career in the military. He had an arrangement with him that if there was ever an impending national crisis, they would contact him with as much advance notice as possible. Going to his closet, he quickly opened it and pulled out his always packed backpack, filled with emergency supplies for such, such an occasion. In the military, when they had to leave an area quickly because of danger, they called it bugging out. So this was his version of a bug out bag. He fastened the buckles and adjusted the straps to fit him securely. Then, going into the hallway where he kept his bicycle, he removed the helmet from off the handlebars and then put up the kickstand. He wheeled it toward the kitchen and to the back door of his house. Then, propping the screen door open, he pushed the bike through the back door and onto the back deck outside of the house. He was filled with a sense of trepidation as he closed the door of his house for perhaps the last time. The way events were spinning out of control, he might never be able to come home. He was so thankful that he and some of his other friends had had the foresight to purchase a small cabin and property some 70 miles away from the city in a very rural area. He paused for just a while, trying to mentally process the enormity of the moment. And then, while the city continued what seemed like a normal day, he mounted the bike 
and pedaled off. He went only a short distance and then dismounted to thoroughly go over the bike before his long trip. He really should have done this before he left the house, but better late than never. Before he got too far away, everything had to be just right. The heavy duty Kenda tires were well inflated and the 48 volt battery inside the VeloWave e-bike was fully charged. The powerful 750 watt Bafeng motor looked good. The rear rack was secure. Going around to the other side of the bike and turning on the electronics, he checked the battery level. He'd ridden the bike some 55 miles. The bike was also equipped with powerful disc brakes. Now it was time to get on the road. As usual, the Vila Wave Ranger was a joy to ride. Although he had been an avid bicyclist in his younger years, he had gotten away from riding. Now, however, the e-bike was putting the joy back into bicycling. Whenever he came to a hill, he merely had to pedal and select one of the seven gears moderated by the Shimano derailleur, as well as the level of power put out by the battery and motor from zero, which was no assistance, all the way up to level five, the most assistance. There was even a throttle lever that, when depressed, would send the e-bike along at 20 miles an hour, even without pedaling. In the seventh, and his best gear with the assistance set at level five, he had had no trouble getting the bike up to its advertised 28 miles per hour. He had even achieved a speed of 47 miles per hour going down a steep hill, and the large tires and front suspension was stable, even at such speeds. Soon, he was leaving the city center and headed toward the city outskirts. Traffic was relatively light, and he took advantage of the many bike lanes that were available to him. No doubt, in a few days, there were very high possibilities that these very streets would be crowded and clogged with many people, all struggling to get out of the city. He could only imagine the traffic jams and the noise, but he was glad for the ability to get out ahead of time. He made his way past friendly dogs and people into the suburbs, and then he finally pulled over and made his first stop at an abandoned gas station for lunch. He took off the backpack, glad for a chance to stop and rest for a while. First thing he did was to mix up an oral rehydration packet. His body felt rather depleted after the 20 miles or so under the summer sun. As he pulled out his freeze-dried meals in their individual single-serve packets, he reflected on the current times and his location. The abandoned gas station was a grim reminder of the nation's prosperous past, as well as a stark and sobering vision of the near future. He was glad that his e-bike didn't need gasoline and could be easily recharged using the small solar charging system at his bug-out location. Surely the times ahead would be difficult, but he was confident that he and his friends had done all they could do with their limited resources to prepare for this coming national storm. After returning thanks, he then vigorously dug into his meal.
It was maple almond grain crunch and could be eaten cold by just adding water. The battery still had a hefty charge in it, for which he was glad. Soon it was time to hit the road again, and he made good time, heading further away from the city and deeper into the countryside. After a while, in the late afternoon, he sighted the home of Phil, one of his close friends. How you doing, man? Pretty good, Phil. Good to see you. Good to see you, so, too. What are you doing out this way? Oh, man, it's getting bad. Really? So, well, you know our mutual friend that's in the military, he called me this morning and said we've got like 72 hours. Oh, man. And said if, uh, if I want to get out of the city, he said you need to do it now. My car's broke down, so oh, man. I'm so glad I bought that. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it looks awesome. So, yeah, it got me all the way out here. Still got plenty of charge on the battery. And, uh, you know, for a... Uh, not so great a shape, middle-aged guy. Yeah, he did it. So it's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. You got a place I can camp for the night? Yep, sure do. It's right out back. Nice awesome. And, quiet. and a place where I can filter some water. Yep. Got a little pond in the back for you too. All right. Awesome. Let's go. Let's go check it out. All right. Phil had a great location for the tent and ready access to a small pond. As Phil was on a well for his own drinking water, he was just going to use his own portable water filter so as not to tax Phil's small solar system, which he would soon need for his own use. The tent that he had brought with him was a small bivy tent with only two poles and fit very comfortably inside of his backpack. It could be put up very quickly. He also had a great air mattress, which would go a long way toward ensuring a good night's sleep. He still had many miles to pedal in even more rugged and hilly terrain than today and he knew that a good night's rest was essential to having his full strength for tomorrow. After adding his pillow, his sleeping quarters for the night was together. Pulling out his Katadyne Hiker water filter and attaching the silicone tubes. He dropped the filter end into the pond and began to pump, filling up all of his water bottles again. He had decided against the hydration bladder as he found them difficult to clean and a potential harbor for bacteria. He could ill afford to get sick at this time. At the last moment, he had put his sink strainer stove in his pack as well as some of his homemade fire cubes. The cube lit easily enough using the lighter which he always carried in his pocket. Tonight's supper would be cooked scrambled eggs. He was famished and truly looking forward to his meal. He added the proper amount of water to the freeze-dried eggs and then stirred them vigorously. Placing his stainless steel cup over the stove, he adjusted it so it would sit properly and then continued to stir it occasionally as it cooked.
Within minutes, it was ready, and he breathed a prayer of thanks for the food, friends, and safety, and then dug into the meal in the way that only a truly hungry person knows. He also opted to drink the creamy chocolate shake that night. The 40 essential vitamins and nutrients, as well as the minerals, would help to refuel his muscles as he slept. It felt good to have the food and drink inside of him, and it seemed he could feel the energy from it seeping into his body as he ate. Once again, he checked the battery level before he plugged it into Phil's charging system. He had gone about 40 miles through hilly country. He had also put in a large contractor grade garbage bag at the last minute. It had a thousand uses, but tonight it would protect his pack from the heavy dew and potential rain showers while he slept. He then pulled out his small tent light and tested the battery. It was double O-ring sealed and ran on a single AAA battery. Turning it off and back on, it began to flash the familiar SOS pattern of three dots, three dashes, and three more dots of light. Well, soon it was time to turn in. And so he removed his waterproof hiking boots made by Merrill tucked the laces inside the boots and then carefully placed them inside the tent next to him. He was indeed very tired and looking forward to a good night's sleep. The next morning dawned upon another beautiful day. The temperature was only going to be in the mid-80s and the humidity was low. He could tell by the amount of dew on the grass that it was going to be a clear day without rain. Soon, however, the impending disaster began to weigh upon him as he stretched his weary body in preparation for another hard day of travel. He plugged his phone into his solar battery charger, wondering how much longer the grid and modern communications would be available. For breakfast, it was another cold meal of powdered milk and mixed with hearty apple cinnamon oatmeal. He felt a sense of urgency and he was glad that he was able to escape the city and also be able to pass the warning on to Phil about what was coming. Breakfast ready, he again bowed his head to ask for blessing and protection upon his upcoming journey and then once again dug into his meal. That done, he packed up the tent as well as the rest of his belongings, reshouldered his pack 
and began to ready himself for the many miles that lie ahead of him that day. The road rolled past under his wheels as he went deeper and deeper into the country. Soon, there was little to no traffic, and he began to breathe a whole lot easier. Safety was getting closer with each push of the pedals. Late that afternoon, he turned onto the gravel road leading to his bug out location. He couldn't help but feel a little happy that things had gone so well. It had been a good day, and there was just one more large obstacle he had to cross before he was home free. There was a large creek crossing, but thankfully, it hadn't rained for the last few days, so it too was easily manageable for the Vila Wave Ranger bike. Even the steep gravel roads were no match for the powerful electric assist, and he climbed them easily, barely breaking a sweat. He stopped again then for a rest and a drink. He was only a mile or so from his destination, and the rugged wilderness about him was comforting in its distance from the chaos of civilization. He had been judicious with his water use that day and still had a full bottle left. He had also filtered and drank a lot before he left Phil's house that morning. He was so grateful for the e-bike and the safe trip. Even though he was a tad out of shape, the added ability of the e-bike more than made up for it. He still had half of the battery left and he had climbed many large hills that day. Well. In a few minutes, he would be at a secure location where he had stashed food, clothes, and additional supplies, as well as the items necessary to provide protection from the elements, as well as wild animals. Well, it's time to get going, so putting the bottle back, he wheeled the bike out one more time, and then headed down the road towards safety. Everything went well for the next couple of days. And then 